Well, welcome once again to the Friday Devotional. John Miller here, and uh, you want to grab your Bible uh, or your smartphone and uh, head for Ephesians chapter 3, and uh, beginning with verse 14. And I hope you're having a good Friday or Saturday or Sunday so far. Uh, but let's let's dive into the Word of God. This is the book of Ephesians, this uh, church of Ephesus uh, in Asia Minor, near the Aegean Sea. Um, and to the Christians in that city, Paul is obviously writing here. And he says in verse 14, for this reason, I bow my knees before the Father. Uh, what reason? So you look up in the in the uh, in the context, and you can see in uh, verse twelve that he talks about the boldness uh, that we have to enter in the access we have to the perfect throne room of God. That you and I, through prayer. Uh, can enter the Holy of Holies and do it with confidence, as um, Hebrews 10 talks about. Do it, do it with confidence. How can you walk into a holy place when, you know, we're sinners? Well, we're sinners saved by grace. We're clothed with the holiness of God. We're clothed with the righteousness of Jesus Christ. The Lord is, has... Uh, given us a new life, forgiven us our, our sins, we're sons and daughters of God, and we can enter in freely, humbly, into the holy presence of a perfect God. And so he says, for this reason, I bow my knees before the Father. And he bows his knees, so I think it's good for us at times to get on our knees. When's the last time you got on your knees uh, to pray? It gives you a whole different perspective and feeling of perhaps the seriousness of the moment to enter in uh, to this very special place. Um, not that you have to, but you ought to try it if you haven't done it for a while. Uh, for this reason, I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. Not just believers, but unbelievers. Uh, everyone comes from the Father God. Uh, the one who created human beings, starting with Adam and Eve. So in one sense, God is the father of the human race. In another sense, uh, you have to say that when Adam and Eve were cast out of the garden, that they left the family of God, um, the presence of Almighty God, and therefore uh, were orphans in a sense, estranged from the one who created them. Uh, so, but Paul says here, hey, every, everyone um, uh, comes from Almighty God. And then he says that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant you, this is in the plural, the church, grant you to be strengthened with power through his spirit in your inner being. So in this prayer, uh, he, he's, he comes before the people, the Christians uh, of uh, Ephesus, and it says that according to the riches of his glory that he may grant you. Of course, it's according to his riches, which are vast and unlimited, that he may grant you to be strengthened with power. And this idea of power is that you may be fully capable. It's, it's uh, that you might be fully capable um, through his spirit in your inner being. And so in our inner being, I assume he's referring to the soul, that immaterial part of every one of us. And that he may give you this strength and this power. By the way, it's through his spirit, the Holy Spirit, because that's the power we possess as believers. It's the, it's the power of the Holy Spirit so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And so Christ is dwelling, again, he uses the word heart, inner being, it's our soul. Uh, that he may dwell in there, and he dwells in there through faith in Jesus. There was a time when you placed your faith in Jesus where you were born again, where, where Jesus Christ came in and took up residence in your soul. 
And then he says, uh, he comes in there that you, being rooted and grounded in love, seems to me that rooted and grounded was uh, uh, stated by a, a certain preacher last Sunday at uh, CFC. Those words rooted and grounded, uh, that you being rooted in the word of God, in the person of Christ, being rooted and then grounded. But this a statement here for in Ephesians is in love, rooted in his love. And by the way, that, that's, that's so key, that uh, love is the motivation of why we do anything for God. Not duty, not fear, but love. And that, may, that you may have a strength to comprehend, that you may be capable of comprehending with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ which surpasses knowledge. Uh, just coming to know God more in his fullness. And that's the prayer that Paul prays for these people that they may comprehend and know, and he says that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now, this is the prayer that you and I can pray for this church. This is a prayer you, can, you and I can pray for uh, other believers that, and for ourselves, that we and they may come to know God in all his fullness. Now, we're not gonna reach that fullness till we see Jesus face to face, but the prayer is that Oh, that we might know God in the, in the depth, in comprehensing, comprehension, comprehension of him um, ever more deeply as we uh, grow our roots more deeply in Christ. So this is, again, the idea of progressive sanctification. One sec there, there's a positional sanctification, that's a done deal. And there's progressive sanctification where we're growing into Christ-likeness uh, in terms of our, our developing faith. Uh, so it's a wonderful and beautiful prayer. And uh, we can pray this prayer for ourselves and for others. So uh, there's a bit of the Word of God this morning on this day. And I hope you have a wonderful weekend and to see many of you on Sunday. Bye-bye.